Hey everyone, welcome to the live. I hope you can hear me and see everything all right. This is my very first YouTube live here on the channel. I have quite a few regularly filmed videos and content, but today we're trying a different layout for the Tampa Bay real estate market update of 2023 for September. Please leave below in the chat where you're watching me from, what part of the country. I'd love to be able to connect with you. For those that don't know me, my name is Vivian Arona. I'm a realtor here in the greater Tampa Bay area. I specifically serve the Hillsborough County and Pasco County metros, and I also specialize in new construction. So this is a totally new format. If you're watching the replay, hi, welcome to the video. I wanted to switch things up a little bit and really the purpose of today's video, number one, is to go over the market data and information. And then number two is answer a very frequently asked question when it comes to the real estate market, which is, should I wait for interest rates to drop? Um, the number one job of the media is to you know, get clicks, get views. And so a lot of news outlets, a lot of doom and gloom creators are out there um, spreading information. And some, in some events, it's actually mis in misinformation or it's not information that is relevant to a specific situation. And so sometimes that causes a lot of an uncertainty and ambiguity for a potential homeowner um, or a potential home buyer. And so really my job as a realtor is to become somebody's trusted real estate advisor. I'm not here to make any market predictions. I'm not here to predict the economy. I'm not here to predict what will happen or not happen. I'm simply here to help educate my customers and present the data and the information and present what has actually been happening every single day when I work with the boots on the ground in the trenches with buyers and sellers here in our market. Um, so I would love to see where you're all connecting from. I want to go ahead and jump into the content. So if you've seen my previous videos, they go a little bit like this. We're going to take a look at um, some of the general overall market stats. So we're going to start with Hillsborough County. So for August 2023, and the reason why we go back a month is because that's what data is provided from the Association of Realtors here locally in Florida. So for August 2023, the month ended um, with 2.1 months supply of inventory, which is refreshing because we haven't had a whole lot of inventory in our market for several years now. Um, it's actually the same from what it was this time last year. Now for Hillsborough County for average sales price, um, this is up 7.4% compared to exactly one year ago in August 2022. And the average sales price is at $565,034. Um, again, this is for a single family home. Of course, um, for a specific city or neighborhood, these numbers may be slightly different. When it comes to closed price to list price, meaning the seller listed their home at a specific amount, what did it actually sell for? How close to that list price? And this month, it was actually down compared to last year at 98.2%. So for a buyer, on a buyer's perspective, this is actually... Um, a welcome improvement. So there's a little bit of room for negotiation, especially on the resale side when it comes to purchase price. And then lastly, median days to contract. It's up from last year. So median days to contract, meaning how many days from when a listing actually goes live to how many days is it before they actually go under contract and have an executed offer and buyer. So that's 19 days um, compared to this time last year. It is definitely up um, now for Pasco County. Um, these numbers can be slightly different, especially because of the popularity of new construction in this county, especially in cities like Dade City, Zephyr Hills, Wesley Chapel. 
So these numbers are the same from last year. It's 1.9 months of active inventory. And I just want to make sure and reference um, and point out what they were about a year ago. Um, so last year they were the same, but last month, the previous month, so July of 2023, it was right at 1.7 months of inventory. So even compared to monthly change, it's also increased. So not just year over year, but also from the prior month. Now for average sales price, we have $431,476 average sales price for a single family home. Again, this is up right around 3% compared to last year. And in comparison to last month in July of 2023, that was at $422,000. And for close price to list price, 98.5%. So it's down from the previous year. And it's slightly down compared to July 2022. And then median days to contract, same as Hillsborough County, it is 19 days, median days to contract. If you're watching, drop a comment below in the chat, say hello. Um, I'd love to be able to connect with you, see where you're watching from. I want to now specifically address Wesley Chapel because this is a very popular um, city that I get a lot of questions about. I get a lot of calls, texts, and emails on a daily and weekly basis here off the YouTube channel for people looking to relocate here to the Wesley Chapel Metro and Market. Month supply of inventory, we have 1.7 months. That's down from this time last year. And the average sales price, this is like really interesting information. It's up an entire 6% from over a year ago. So right now, average sales prices in Wesley Chapel are $570,000. So a lot of the information that comes into this information for the market update includes some new construction. The challenge with new construction is that not all of the builders list their listings onto the MLS because you might be buying a semi-custom home. You might be buying a to-be-built product. You may be even buying an inventory home, but the builder doesn't necessarily list that information onto the MLS, which is what we as realtors have access to in order to um, find listings and send them to our buyers. So it makes it challenging at the end of the day to be able to know how the new construction, how far the new construction market actually affects these numbers and data because not all builders list their information on the MLS. Now, um, when it comes to actually answering the million dollar question is, well, what do I do? Should I wait to invest in a home now or later? Should I wait for interest rates to drop? Um, what do you recommend, right? So at the end of the day, my job is to educate and help guide and counsel. So I, I like to put this in the perspective of some real numbers. Now, interest rates currently in our market are a big sticking point for many buyers or even homeowners who currently own a home and are looking to make a move. In our market currently, the majority of the people that are relocating to this area are people who are coming in from out of state. That's been my personal experience with the type of customers that I work with, um, or people who are having major life events that require them or prompt them to make a move in the market. So let's say, for example's sake, right now in the market, you had an average of a 7.5% interest rate. Now, the interest rate gets people really hung up. At the end of the day, the interest rates fluctuate daily. They also depend on so many variables. What's your income? What's your credit score? Um, can you buy down the rate? Uh, what type of loan program are you purchasing a home with? Is it conventional? Is it FHA? Are you a VA buyer? Is it a USDA loan? There's so many variables. But for example's sake, let's say right now you were looking to purchase a home and that home costs $600,000 for easy math and you put 10% down as a down payment and 
let's say when you locked in your interest rate, it was right around seven and a half percent, which is probably a little bit high and maybe a little bit lower in reality. Your monthly mortgage payment would be four thousand two hundred and thirty six dollars. Now, let's say you're like, well, you know, I'm going to wait six months, a year, a year and a half. Who knows how long it may be for those interest rates to decrease slightly. And I'm actually going to just wait it out and I'm going to buy a home later on. So in that event, let's say now that same home that in today's market was $600,000 has hypothetically speaking appreciated in value up to $700,000 for that same exact home. But now those interest rates are down to 6%, say for example. Same concept, you put down a 10% down payment and that monthly mortgage payment came out to $4,304. So in all reality, actually waiting for a lower interest rate is actually more expensive. So the monthly mortgage payment later on would be $4,304 versus buying a home now at $4,236. And these, you know, these are just rough estimates and calculations but it really helps paint a picture to really put into perspective what the interest rates actually do. Now, a lot of people are assuming and saying, okay, I'm going to wait for the interest rates to decrease to a, a number or a percentage that I feel comfortable or confident with. The challenge comes in that so many other buyers also have that same thought process. The current market trajectory trends and prediction, predictions are that we are going to continue to see an appreciation in value in housing because there is not enough inventory and there is still enough buyer demand, even with the higher interest rates. So what could potentially end up happening when several buyers are on the fence and they do end up waiting for that 6% or lower interest rate. Well, now you have multiple buyers who were no longer in the buyer pool or previously in the buyer pool. They're all entering the buyer market. So now you have an increase in the number of buyers out on the market and therefore that's creating a demand in the market. So we know the very simple supply and demand increase in demand increase in pricing. And at that point, we could potentially see something very similar to what we saw during the COVID market, where we have limited inventory, multiple offer situations, bidding wars, having to offer 50, 60, $70,000 or more above the list price in order to secure the home of your dreams. Um, so maybe that home listed at 700,000, you end up paying more than $700,000 for and appraisal waivers, just a very similar climate and market to what we saw currently um, in the, the COVID market. So at the end of the day, here's my take on it. You can definitely determine how you want to proceed in the real estate market, but here's something that you should think about prior to making your decision to move forward now or, or if you're going to wait. A lot of people say, oh, you need to time the market. You need to, to time your move. You need to time your sale. I don't think you can ever actually time the market. It's nearly impossible to predict what will happen. But your time in the market makes a world of a difference. So the longer you own your home, the more equity and appreciation and value your home has. So as I just demonstrated with some real numbers, if a buyer again, is waiting for rates to drop, they may be doing so at the expense of a higher average sales price. Um, and that may cost them appreciation and value for their home over time. So I look at owning a home kind of like an additional built-in savings account. And the longer you have that savings account, the longer you're making those monthly mortgage payments towards that account, the more appreciation, the more value, the more equity you have in your home. So that's just a really, um, I guess, kind of general synopsis of how these interest rates are affecting people. On the flip side, I would say in today's market, we have seen a market that is far more conducive for buyers than it was two to three years ago. Benefits of buying even when the interest rates are maybe higher than what a, a a buyer would feel comfortable with is you have more negotiation power, especially in the resale market. 
when it comes to purchase price contingencies, such as um, your inspections, negotiating repairs, you may have more negotiation on closing dates, due diligence periods. There's more negotiation overall in the resale market. And then in the new construction market, um, we are seeing a lot more flexibility from the builders when it comes to builder incentives. So I've seen some local builders offering up to $30,000 in incentives. You know, you can take a certain chunk towards the purchase price and reduce the purchase price by a certain amount. And then you can take remaining funds and buy down your interest rate or apply it towards closing costs. There's other builders that are offering through their in-house lender, um, 30 year fixed mortgage rates at five and a half percent or 5.775 percent, depending on the loan type. So, there's a lot more opportunities to be able to offset that increase in the rates. And then, lastly, there's several different loan programs that help you offset that price of the interest rate for the first two years. You can buy down your rate. There's many different um, alternatives and things you can do in today's market. Um, and then lastly, when it comes to the new construction sector, while in the resale market, there's a lot of demand and a lot of flexibility for negotiation, there's still demand in the new construction market. So uh, buyers who have purchased in a prior market and have bought new construction maybe prior to COVID are accustomed to, well, you know, I'm just going to negotiate down the price um, with the builder and I'm going to get X, Y, and Z. We're not really seeing that in this market. That's really not the climate of today's market. Um, there's still enough demand in the new construction sector that by, the builder is not at the point where they're negotiating sales prices. There's other things that you can negotiate in the new construction sector. There's a lot of new construction communities coming to the greater Tampa Bay area, creating significant inventory in our market, which is really, really welcome after so many years of significantly low inventory. Lots of new construction communities, lots of incentives with builders. So if you are ever curious on what a move to the Tampa Bay market would look like for you, if new construction is right for you, or if you want a personalized specific market analysis or market report for a specific city or neighborhood or segment in our market, reach out to me. My contact information is below in the description of this video. I'm always happy to chat and answer any of your questions related to the new construction market, resale market, and the market. Um, and what has been consistently and seasonally year over year, a slower market for this time of year in September, in my experience, it's been um, a very active market. So there's still lots of demand, lots of buyers moving to the area, still homes are selling and a proper pricing, proper marketing. You can get a good amount of return on the sale of your home. You can make um, good sales in the area as well when it comes to pricing and appreciation and value. So overall, our market is still a strong market. There's still demand. And it'll be interesting to see what the market does in the next couple of months as we close out this year and start 2024. So thanks so much for tuning into today's live. That's all of the info that I had to share with you today. If you're watching the replay, thanks so much for tuning in. Leave me a comment below. Let me know where you're watching from. Again, love to connect with you. If you have any questions, reach out to me. All of my contact information is in the description of this video. Stay tuned for the upcoming real estate market content, and I'll catch you in next week's video. Bye-bye.